Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. And welcome to Overwatch Central. So season two ends today, and now I feel the community is a lot more comfortable with how ranked Overwatch is going to run from now on. Whilst, yeah, we could take a little bit of a break and jump into the arcade or quick play for a week, we wanted to go over some tips to improve and progress for season three. And these are in no particular order. But why do we want to go over this now that season two has just ended? Well, that's our first tip. There's a reason as to why we put this video out the same day that season 2 finishes as our first tip is to use the off season to learn and practice. Quick play is in a much more solid state because of the hero limit which gives you a better representation of the ranked environment. This allows you to get practicing straight away even though ranked is unavailable. Rather than waiting for the next season to start playing the game again, you should just get started now. It's like that one New Year's resolution about going to the gym more next year that nobody ever really fulfilled. So just get going now instead. Seek to improve and boost your rank today by practicing heroes you're inconsistent on, push yourself out of your comfort zone by playing heroes you don't usually play, and seek to improve right now rather than later. Of course, take a break from Overwatch if you feel a bit burnt out, but don't leave it too long. Offseason is perfect for learning new heroes, new metas, and getting used to a new playstyle maybe. During this break, you want to take advantage of content that's put up by top players on specific heroes. Now, this in itself is a fairly obvious tip, and it kind of applies all year round, but we're going to go a step ahead and include two upcoming resources that you may want to try out and get familiar with before Season 3. Our first resource you should make use out of is the r slash competitive Overwatch subreddit. There you can find discussions about hero compositions, tips and tricks, but more importantly, you can find a lot of VODs, both of just pure gameplay and also VOD reviews by coaches and high-ranked players. This kind of content is a good way of learning more about decision making and preventing major but not so obvious mistakes. Our second resource is a genius website made by reddit user eWaller which lets a user choose a set of heroes and ranks and then the website then generates a list of live twitch streams which feature those heroes. You can go ahead and use this now, try it out, but it'll be even better when the season is active. But bear in mind that it's still an early model so it's not exactly perfect. But we'll say for example you want to practice D.Va as she's a super strong hero right now. You can click on this website, click D.Va and see a list of streamers playing her in ranked. Not only is this great for the huge amount of content that you can ingest, but it's also great for a streaming community. You can find these resources linked in the description, so bookmark them. Placements can be a rather nerve-wracking and daunting experience and will sometimes be very deflating when you are given your rank if it's not as high as you were expecting or hoping for it to be. We've even seen some players give up instantly after receiving their calibration rank just because they don't really think it's worth bothering this season. For our next tip we want to throw that mentality out of the window and for you to just treat placement games as normal ranked matches. It's also important to note that calibration is going to place people a lot lower for the next season. This is intentional as too many people calibrated around the same rank and in the same tier for season 2. So the start was a little bit messy with some players placing too high for example. For season 3, Blizzard have gone out and said that you will place a lot lower than last season, but you will naturally work your way back up fast into the skill tier you belong in. Sometimes success can make players feel comfortable and content with their ranking. That attitude can somewhat limit you in your playstyle though, and we've spoken about ranked anxiety in the past and it still definitely comes under that. If you hit your target of masters, don't stop because you're afraid of dropping again. It honestly doesn't matter, you're going to drop anyway because of skill decay, but your rank is still only a number and will never represent your skill completely. Your goal is to always beat your own season high rather than keep it at the exact same level. Play to learn and improve, not to increase a number on a screen. Even if you do gradually drop rank, you'll become a much better player as the season progresses. And you also need to remember that the skill rating will increase over time. A rank of 3.7k might get you top 500 at the start of a season, but over time the threshold for the top 500 will rise and rise, and if you get comfortable or content with your rank or placement, or if you've just given up because it's all gone to pot, then you'll end up being left behind by the rest of us. The Overwatch community is constantly getting better at the game, and you need to keep up. Our last tip is about the meta and how useful it can be, but also how it isn't really gospel in all ranks and in all matches, and you can still run some odd heroes without being classed as a troll or having them being classed as troll picks. Characters like Farah, Junkrat, Bastion, and maybe even Symmetra have certain scenarios and situations that they can really perform in, and if you're good on these heroes, it's more than possible to climb the ladder. The important thing for you to know is that there is a time and place, and your team are well within the right to ask you to change if they feel the pick isn't working out. But if you think it could work, if your team think it could work, 
then try it. In Season 2, we've seen tank duos that don't involve a Reinhardt win games. We've seen support duos at the start of the season not running a Lucio. Sometimes even the element of surprise with an attack bastion can win you the game. Hero compositions and the meta are just guidelines to follow, kind of, and it definitely doesn't apply to all skill tiers. You can have a look at what heroes are doing really well right now, and which ones have high win rates this season, but do also keep in mind that this is a team game, so if you're gonna try something that's very different from the meta and very controversial, then at least communicate with your teammates and let them know when you spawn, otherwise you are just going to upset some allies before you've all even left the spawn room. And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching, do let us know your tips for season 3 in the comments below, and let us know if you found these tips helpful. Like this video, it helps out a lot, and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, take care, we'll see you then.